ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise, and welcome to From the Depths, the Dev Test Branch. And the reason we're in here today is because recently, as in just yesterday, the From the Depths uh, development team released version 2.20, but for the dev test only, so we can all have a nice squiz at it, and they can iron out the last few bugs, and so the full update can come out, hopefully, very soon. And I'm really looking forward to it, because what's in the dev test is... Amazing. I am so chuffed with what is going on. And the main theme of the update is, well, as you can see, graphics is a huge part of it. The game looks very different. It looks really, really good, for the most part. And ACBs. That is an automated control box. And so, well, well let's talk about graphics first. Is that there's a whole lot of things added. You'll notice that uh, the water looks very different to what, what the hell is that? Oh, it's a red arrow. Okay, never mind. So the water looks very different to what it was. It's a lot more opaque, and uh, it has reflections. So if we go over here, you can see my lovely little gathering platform is being reflected in the water. That is an awesome feature that I didn't even know I wanted. I just forgot to set my timer. Just let me set that, because I could talk for a really long time about this. Probably shouldn't. Well, probably should and shouldn't. You know, life is funny like that. Okay, there we go. Now I know I've been talking for slightly over five seconds. Right. So that's one thing. There's water reflections and this just... Well, if I read off the list I copied off the internet, there's... In terms of light, there's refraction, there's ambient occlusion, there's bloom, PBR shaders. I don't even know what that is, but I like it. There's light options in the menu. There's deferred rendering and there is shadows. You'll notice that uh, this little radar dish is currently spinning around and it has a shadow and that's actually a really cool feature especially for where's land land is way the hell over there I'm not gonna bother but yeah that's a, that's the well it's an awesome thing the game looks super pretty and uh, some people have been reporting uh, performance issues with it I'm thankfully am not running into that much I think it's been optimized reasonably well Runs, well, I know, it chugs slightly more easily than it was before, but I guess I'm lucky. I guess my machine is better than I thought it was. But yeah, it looks very pretty. And also the UI. The UI is brand spanking new, and I'll show you with the options menu. Look at this. This is absolutely gorgeous. So many options. And here's, well, here's the graphics options, all the advanced stuff right here. I think the devs are patching this as they go really i don't remember this option being uh, graphics all being one tab but yeah so you can go sun intensity actually let's dial that down a little bit let's go here let's move that to one and bloom whoops what did i just do yeah let's turn all that on that's fun gpo what the disable the force of the... oh hello oh hello so you can Ah, there's the old water, right there. That looks weird as hell now. I'm so you... Yeah, that is... Well, if you hate the new water, you can just do this. Ah, very convenient. Very convenient. I think this is... Yeah, I'm... how fast is the team moving? I don't remember this being in here either. This is what I get for only recording this a day after. Yeah, so GPU Ocean. Reflection Probe. Whoop. Boop. And what's fantastic about this options menu is that you can see it happen right here. See, there's a reflection. You can just see it right there. Boop. Okay, never mind. It didn't do it that time. But yeah. So this is really swish. It's like all new... Just all new stuff, eh? Yeah, planar reflection of the water. <laughs> Presets. Potato, simple, mid, maximum. So yeah, this is really swish UI. Sound the same as ever, environment, blah, 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 and you can key map now as well. That's a new feature that I don't think is actually mentioned in the patch notes, which is really, really nice. Uh, hmm. Yes, all this kind of stuff, it's really sweet. Build options, dun, 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 dun. All this, all this, all that, all that. I really recommend uh, trying the dev test for yourself if you can. Uh, not ever. I've just been. The word's been in the my Discord server that. My Discord server. That still sounds weird to say. 
that not everyone's machine can handle this new stuff, but if you can, recommend having a poke, it's great. So, the game looks pretty, and uh, lots of little features to talk about. There's waves as well, so if I go to the options menu, there's a new wave system. So, where's it? Environment. Wave factor, I can turn that all the way up to 4, and look how friggin' big these waves are. Now, unfortunately, because the water moves so slowly, it looks more like jelly than actual water, so... Looks a little bit weird, and these waves are... Well, they're massive. So these, uh... So right here, in the environment, wave factor 4... That's about 4 meters tall, so let's not do that. Go there, and if I set it to 0... The water looks like that. It just essentially looks like very still. It actually doesn't look too bad with the flip. Yeah, it looks like glass now, and you can even see clouds reflected in it, which is really swiss, but we're gonna turn the waves back up a little bit because it looks a little bit weird like that. There we go. It looks slightly more like water now. And I believe the team is working on it, like, to have the... to have the waves move in a somewhat more believable manner because at the moment they just move too slowly to look like water, and it's very opaque down here. I can't see anything, so... And also, like, at the moment with this water setting, you can't see submarines or torpedoes at all. So, there's a balance to be struck there, because I rather liked in the... in the main branch how you could kind of see torpedo trails. Not realistic in the least, by the way, but it's just handy from a gameplay point. Okay, that's enough of how gorgeous this now looks, and how funky the water looks. Let's move on to the ACBs, because ACBs are amazing. Yeah, I should mention also there's brand new textures for, like, everything, really. And the fact that shaders are a thing means that even, like, wood looks fantastic, metal looks fantastic. Uh, alloy looks, uh, I think it looks a little bit stupid, but, eh, I don't know. I'm not a fan of the segmented type thing. Like, metal looks similar, but for some reason with metal it just looks better. Alloy looks a lot like, I don't know, industrial sewer grating or something like that. Not to slag, slag off the devs' work, but, I don't know. Alloy just never looked particularly good. It's why you've got to remember to paint it. So, anyway, got distracted again. So, control box. This thing has had a complete overhaul. And before I open this thing up and show you what's new in here, because the UI for this is completely different. Jeez. Look at the shiny buttons. So shiny. And getting distracted again. So, ACB Trangers, you can now have intervals between activation of the control block. You can have queued delayed action. You can have custom priorities, as in which control block has its effect first, which is like the master control block. You can have custom names, so you can name them. You can have ACB logic gates, and uh, I wish I knew what a logic gate was, but I don't know programming. That probably makes sense to people. It just, I guess it just means it goes... It goes if X, then Y, and if Y, then B, or something like that. You've got collapsible categories in there, so it's easier to find the thing you want. You've got inverted conditions for pretty much every setting, so you can say if yes, do that, or if no, do that. And you can have minimum and maximum input, so you can say if value of thing between X and Y, uh, do B. And you can have... Uh, ACB selecting blocks based on name, so it can do... So you can have, potentially set up an ACB to control a specific... Not, another specific ACB based on the name, I'm guessing. And this is a design GUI, well, it shows uh, what blocks are being controlled, and it has brand new condition and action, so let's show you in here. So, here's the conditions, this is already start, so... MISC, none start, ACB taken damage, timer, object presence, time of day. Which means, time of day I think is new, you can have the lights turn on at night, it's fantastic. Vehicle stats, health, ammo, fuel, battery power, laser attack. Laser attack is friggin' fantastic, it means that if you have laser warners you can trigger something. It also probably means that you can uh, start to exploit the hell out of, like, smoke shells, instead of using smoke dispensers, which I'm kinda cool with actually, because smoke dispensers are a bit hit and miss. You've got vehicle attitude. God damn, man, these vehicles got attitude. Sorry. Speed, forward speed, pitch, roll, altitude, altitude over sea terrain, altitude over terrain. This, I think, is also a new feature, and I think it'll be very, very handy for anything you want going over both sea and land. 
And control, your command, pitch command, roll command, propulsion command, enemy, range, altitude, bearing, speed, health, power, missiles, torpedoes. So that's all very, that's all very sweet, and it's like, very nice that these are collapsible little menus now, so you can just do this, do that, do this, can't deselect MISC, however, which is interesting. And so over here you've got the target, air pump, healing pumps, hydroforce balloons, AI, mainframes, detection components, aimpoint cards, ACBs, you can, oh uh, yeah, wow, interesting. Yeah, you can muck with the aimpoint cards now. Like, I haven't had much time to look over this in detail. This is kind of the first time I'm really looking at it. But yeah, you can muck around with the aimpoint. Muck around with other ACBs. Like, muck around with PIDs, aerial AI cards, wireless transmitters, wireless receivers, and enemy simulators. Moving parts and drones, spin blocks, pistons, constructible spawners, docking stations. Desired speed, propulsion components, warp drives, complex controls and sails. Seal protectors, lambs, weapon systems, laser systems, ammo intex heat decoys. This, I think, is new. This, I think, is very new, actually. You can control lambs. Yeah, you can set color, range, and angle. What the? Wow, that's not in the patch notes. You can set the color of the lambs. Mother of God, that's amazing. I wonder if that works for simple lasers as well. Anyway, so. Resources, ammo presses, and refineries. That was already here. Powers. Electric engines, fuel engines, steam boilers, and steam valves. MISC, light, spotlight, smoke generation, holograms, projectors, missile laser emitters. Those, uh, some of those were there, some of those are not. Spotlights are a new thing. And so, for example, say I want to... What do I want to do? Say we want range. And... So if there's an enemy within... Like, if there's an enemy within sight, so in between... Uh, Minus infinity and plus infinity, so if an enemy is detected. Say I want to turn the lights on because battle stations, and I want to set that to red. That's something like how I do it. Okay, and so let's just test that. I'm going to put another one here. Actually, no, 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 no. yes. Actually, yes, 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 yes. So enemy range, and then invert. So there's no enemy with this in this now, and lights. Set intensity, value 0. Now I have another one over here, which sets it to range. And enemies within here. And lights are set to 100%, because action stations. So let's give that a try right now. Let's have a light over here. So let's turn the UI back on. So no enemy executing. Okay. Do, 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 do. So we got our light right here. Let's just test this out. I'm just mucking around now because I'm so excited. Okay, so where's the light? Where's the good light? Spotlight. So that's spotlight. Light fitting. These look exactly the same for some reason. That's weird. Illuminates a directional area. Okay, cool. And neon light. Which I like. I'm over here. Okay, so those are all off because this and this is handy. It's even color coded. Let there's an enemy within blah blah blah. So let's spawn an enemy. Our old friend the Marauder. Turning off. And the lights are on. And lights are off. So yeah, that's just one tiny example of what you can do with ACBs. This I think I might just have to stick on. Actually, let's see this uh, spotlight thing, because spotlights are freaking dope. You could stick them onto anti-aircraft stuff. Range. Yeah, let's set that up. Let's see how let's see how awesome this is. So let's spawn in the Marauder again. Turning off. I uh, think the range is set too high. So let's dial that down to 50. That does not work. Interesting. See, this is in the dev test for a reason. Yeah. It was working so well before. Turning off. Bug report. Okay, so anyway, 
So that's the ACBs pretty much. A lot of new options. I'm really looking forward to seeing what people make up that. And so there's other little notes. The other major thing that has happened here is that, well, a lot of things now you can customize the colors of a lot more. So let's uh, hop off here and we're just going to place a simple laser, for instance. So simple weapons, laser. You can change the color of these things now, which I am very, very happy with. So you start off with... Okay, we don't have ammo. This is embarrassing. Never fear, we have ammunition now. Look at that. We got ammo. So we got this little red thing. This is the default. The good news is, is that we can now change this. So I want this to be white. I like white lasers for some reason. So... And we got a little white laser. But no fear, we can have it to be bright green as well. So that's just a nice little extra bit of customizability. And you can also do that with a number of things. You can do that with particle cannons now. You can do that with smoke generators, which can also be stopped with ACPs as well. So we go here, let's set smoke generators. Set type says piece, set color, blah, blah, blah. So set type, value, smoke, or flame, or stopped, which is interesting. Okay, so there we go. And let's muck around. I hit the wrong button. So let's stick a smoke generator on here. Where is it? You never usually go in here. Okay, so here's our smoke generator. What's the color? Let's have this bright for... Oh my god, yes. Oh my god, that is so cool. I love that. So particle speed. Fire particles. Smoke particles. Not much difference. Fire. Smoke. Default color. So what happens if I... Oh, I like that. That is pretty. That is so trippy. I love it. Fire. I'm not getting fire. Generating... Okay, that's because this friggin' ACB over here. Let's just delete these for a second. Fire particles. There we go. You can make a torch. Particle size. Oh my god, too big. And unfortunately, you can't change the color of the fire, although that would be pretty freaking cool. Let's have it bright red. Let's have it bright red. And that. And that. Particle size. Oh my word. Send up a flare, guys. Send up a flare of the Scarlet Dawn are coming. Okay, that's a little bit excessive. Particle size. Particle speed. All the way back down here. So yeah, that's an awesome thing. And you can, con and you can change that with the ACVs as well. So you can... Pretty much have a ship that says, Hey, battle stations, fire up the red smoke. So yeah, just gonna leave that up there. And as I said before, like, I'm not gonna pull out a particle cannon to mess with it now, because I hate particle cannons. But you can change the color of that as well. So, what else, what else? The other really important thing is... With... Uh, advanced cannon firing pieces. There's lots to cover in this, by the way. So, this thing now has a base cooldown of about 10 gauge coolers which means that if you have a shell here let's just quickly make a little thing whoop whoop wrong way around actually no right way around that's weird Why is this mantle not attaching? Oh, Omni Man. There, that's why. Durr. A durr, a durr, a durr. So, barrels, and boom, boom. And we're just gonna make something with a ridiculously long cooldown. So, go over here, go over. Here. Ah, that was not what I wanted to do. Boom, and ammo cost my bum, 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 bum. And. So, bow around. 
So, quite a crappy little thing, but here to Tingdo. So you see that is firing decently quick. It's got a cooldown of about 1.42 seconds for this extremely gunpowder heavy shell. And in the base game, or in the previous version I should say, because this is planned to be ported over to the stable branch like pretty soon, you'd need to jam quite a few uh, of these things. Gauge cooling units in order to on the end of this in order to get a decent rate of fire, and what th the reason for this is because the devs want small advanced cannons to be more viable, and apparently previously they weren't. Like I almost didn't bother with them much at all simply because I don't know, just I don't, I'm not really an advanced cannon kind of guy, but there was basically advanced cannons were apparently getting to the point where. They were only really useful from about medium to high gauge, and that's not really the point of them. The point is to have like little secondary guns and AA guns and all that kind of jazz. So this is a quite a welcome change, actually. Like, I tend to think of advanced cannons as being hopelessly overpowered most of the time, but if it means that I can make a small little gun, well, it's pretty much exactly like this, then awesome. It means you can have small guns and direct input feeders as in guns which don't use autoloaders or magazines, they just use these little ammo inputs on the firing piece. If that makes them more viable, and it does, by the way, here's actually one I made earlier, and it's pretty friggin' sweet. So let me see. Here we go. So this is a bit big. So where can I stick it? I'm just gonna stick it right here. Very bad place for it, but yeah, this thing with the shell. Okay, I'll put, I will make the shell that I use for it because it's really cool. Ring, 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 banana phone. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding, banana phone. I got this feeling so appealing. Okay, none of that. So if we go over here. Boop, boop, boop. And can I get up there? Yes, I can. So, what thing did this just fire? It, uh... Wait. Couldn't even see. Okay, never mind. But the, what the hell was I just doing? What a waste of time that was. But so anyway, this little deck gun is now actually a viable option because with this little shell over here, the cooldown for this with no coolers is only about 10 seconds, which admittedly isn't incredibly fast by advanced cannon standards, but it means that this thing has no coolers in it. It just has gauge increases which really cuts down on both the size and the cost, and it means that direct input is very viable now with this update. Like, it was viable before, but it's more viable now, and I'm ecstatic about that, because it's like direct input feeders and crams and missiles are my favorite weapon in this whole, favorite weapons in this whole game. So I am very chuffed with that particular change. So thank you, devs, for that. Spent way too long on that. Okay, so there's a whole mess of other changes to get through. One of which is... I'm just going to read a lot of these out. So, the character. So, Rambot. Telekinesis, the skill, which I've never used, by the way. Scales with vehicle size, meaning you can move vehicles around, no problem. Copy-paste block skill. I have never used this before, but I guess I should. So, let's try that right now. So character sheet, and... Skills. Copy-paste. Let's go there. So, six... I don't know how this works. Yeah, I don't really know, understand how... Yeah, I don't understand that at all. But presumably someone who knows can tell me. Wait. Wait. 
freaking hell. Okay, so there is also, what is really helpful is this debug tool, it's health and armor class. So you can just, you can see number 9 down there on the keyboard. It's now showing the armor and health of this block right here. And the armor is currently about 4 because the stacked armor bonus is right behind it. So let's see here, so let's go here. So would be armor class of this thing is three at this angle. So you see it changes depending on what angle you come at it. From here, the angle is just th the armor, the armor class, the AC is just three because there's nothing behind it. From here, armor class is six because there's another wooden block right behind it. So if we modify that to a metal beam let's look at that again now the armor's 18 so you can actually now see the armor of individual blocks which is tremendously helpful and if we change that to heavy armor now the armor's 43 so like <laughs> you could really see how like armor stacking is effective because this wooden block now has 40 armor it is much harder to blow off still made of wood though worth remembering and there's a whole bunch of things that ignore stacking armor completely, so meh, it might not be worth it anyway. But, uh, there's also an EMP debug skill, which unfortunately doesn't seem to be working at the moment. Not sure about that. <laughs> yeah, this is current currently doesn't appear to be working for me, but uh, hopefully they're working on it. Oh, there we go. Wait a minute, might have just figured this out. Okay, so if I go here, for instance. What the hell is going on? Okay, I haven't figured out that one either, so never mind that. But it's there, and when it's fully implemented, it'll just be a good way of you... What the fudge just happened? A good way of just kind of seeing how EMP susceptible your craft are. And besides, there is where there is apparently now a variable thrust propeller for missiles, which is very much worth considering. So launch pad. Hopefully this isn't gonna bite me in the bum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to load up. Do, 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 do. So here we have all this jazz. Oh, this jazz. We're gonna stick another explosive warhead on it because why not? And we have. Ooh. So we could potentially stick. I don't know, what can we stick on there? Let's just be silly. Let's stick this on here. Because why not? Set that to 90. For no ab absolute reason, because, like, have I mentioned I'm mucking around? I'm having a good time. Okay, so variable thing. There we go. Variable pella. Works just like the variable thruster for missiles. And thrust per second. Let's go very low. Let's go 500. Okay, let's see. Let's have a look. So this thing, distance from launch pad, is that it is going... Ah, come on very slowly so that is a very slow torpedo it's actually too slow because it's sinking okay so we're gonna go back here I'm gonna do that again we're going to set this up we actually no keep that as it is set this up to maximum thrust and we're gonna stick a few more ammo barrels in a very unsafe place just so we can get the show on the road there we go okay so now and it has no fuel left because it burnt through all of it instantly. <laughs> so you can potentially muck around with torpedoes now and have them various speeds, just like uh, missiles do. You can have slow torpedoes with very long range and a lot of warheads, or fast ones, which just burn through fuel a lot more quickly. So, 
That's a good change. I like that. And about modding. Now, here's the thing. I am not a coder. I'm not a programmer. But if you investigate the chat, well, not the chat, what's it called? The change blog for this new update. Modding is pretty much easier in every single way. There's ways to track the changes you make when modding. There's like a dummy mod in the... Actually, let's go see it. Let's go see if we can find it. So we go here and we go modding workshop, manage. Okay, please don't crash. Okay, so none of this. Dun, 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 dun. It's install subscriptions. Okay, that's an old mod. Create. Where the hell is it? Mods. Okay, there's mods. So, got all this kind of stuff. And example mod. This right here is has a code project with it and demonstrates how to add code to FTD. So, and made by our Lord and Savior Nick Smart himself. So, this is just in here as a kind of way to show modders like where to stick the mod and how to add code. Which is very nice. Like, I cannot do anything with this because I can't code to save my life. But those of you who can, like, please add a Aim for Center Mass mod as soon as possible. Thank you. I'm only half kidding, but yeah. So that is a definite feature and means that uh, the devs are... The game's not bloody finished yet and they're making it easier for modders. Like, how awesome's that? I love you people. Like, I mean devs, but also, you know, I guess everyone. I love you. Whoever you're watching, whoever's watching this right now, you are a beautiful person. You're beautiful like the reflections on this water right now. Exactly. I don't even need to see you. No, 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 no. Just take the compliment. Have a good day. Where was I? Okay, so I already mentioned the UI. And AI. Apparently the patrol routes up. Let's just load in something to look at just while I'm here. Let's load in... What's a pretty thing? What's a pretty thing? Pretty thing. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's load in... What can we load? Let's load in the Gowana. The Gowana is good for a laugh. So yeah, this thing's on with direct input feeders, and uh, I'm probably going to need to change the guns on this, because it has a whole bunch of coolers, which it probably won't need anymore. Also, buoyancy is slightly broken at the moment, which is why this thing has a jaunty lean on it. Or maybe it's just top-heavy. I don't know. But in any case... So, let's turn that off. So we're just going to look at the Gowana while we talk. And so, AI patrol routes are simpler, more robust code, so if you are using patrol settings on the AI card, it should be able to navigate better, from what I understand, which is great because I love using that, it means I can stop things from driving straight into land. APS, already mentioned that, firing pieces now have uh, the equivalent of 10 coolers already coming with it. Customized colors, local weapon controllers, you can set priorities on them, so let's muck around with that. So here we have a local weapon controller, and let's see here, so that is not the local weapon controller. Not that, you bloody naughty. Okay, so let's see here, so priority. When a weapon is controlled by several uh, local weapon controllers, then, the da -da -da, then whatever controller has the highest priority will be used to aim. If they're both the same priority, then the one place last will be used to aim. So this is when you have multiple weapon controllers on the same turret, or controlling the same weapon, you could customize them to say, okay, which one takes over, when. Which is great, because uh, something like this, you could have it so that, say, when missiles get particularly close, uh, the anti-missile controller, the AMCC, can take over from the local weapon controller. Which is really awesome, means you can make hybrid... Uh, you can make hybrid close-in weapon systems that can shoot both incoming, uh, what do you might call it, both incoming craft and incoming missiles, which is frickin' sweet. And where are we? So buoyancy takes waves into account for large vehicles, and that's probably where this bug is coming on from, because there's no waves right now. Well, I say that, I'm about to make the waves happen. As you can see right now, now the Gowana is really bobbing up and down like crazy, and is probably going to capsize. So, yep, over she goes. That's unfortunate. Yeah, so this, I think, still is being tweaked, but as you can see, it's not a complete disaster. It won't just flip your craft over. This game is hard enough as it is without uh, the game doing that. 
So yeah, that's uh, buoyancy takes away from counts. Blue points load faster. Let's so let's load in something ridiculously big. What's big? Naga is big. Uh, so usually takes about a second or two. Boom. There she is. Boom, boom, boom. I want you in my room. And see the reflection as she lands. Hallelujah. And yeah, Alloy looks sorry from the depths team. Alloy looks still looks awful. Okay. And look at those waves. She's pretty much sunk right now. So much for being a boat. What else? So blue pr explosions are something to mention. So where is it? So if I spawn in something, something annoying. What's something that uh, takes explosions well? Because explosions have been tweaked, so they fling craft around slightly less. So actually in the patch notes saying less case of flying marauder. So you can't really make things fly, but one thing I have noticed is that for crams in particular, it's noticeable that the explosions are a lot smaller. So you can see there, boom boom. Also missiles have new traces, and frags don't make noise. So if you see here, you should be able to see- okay, we can't see. What the hell, guys? So, new explosion effects. Looks fine for advanced cannons. Oh god, I can't see anything. So, okay, so here. Massive cram shell is about to go... Boom. That actually looks alright down here. Huh. Did they fix that? That's amazing, actually. Should be able to see it up here. So brand new explosion effects. Okay, that's enough because my game is actually lagging now. And uh, one thing I don't particularly like is that for crams in particular, it just kind of, the explosion effects look a little bit small for something that's essentially a minibus full of exploding, for, yeah, a minibus that's exploding, filled with gunpowder. So that's a bugger. And shields. Shields have unfortunately been buffed just to tide them over. Let's turn the waves off. Come on. I mean, come on, guys. This is a slightly redinky dink. Okay, there we go. There we go. Naga still sinking. Buoyancy is a little bit screwed. So, 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 so. Shields. The reflect and distort calculation is more forgiving of angle of incidence, meaning shields are just generally more likely to work. There's less a probability that uh, shells will go straight through them. And that's just a stopgap until the shield update happens. And no, I don't know when that's happening. And wheels. So, for those people who like tanks, turning wheels now act exactly the same as drive wheels. Uh, let's show you what I mean. So, over here, here's the wheels. Wheel power, that provides propulsion. Wheel turning, that provides steering. This thing now exerts force just as much as the power wheel does so wheel can well it's essentially proper all-wheel drive now not just drive and steering and also the 20 wheel limit on land craft has been removed so you can have as many wheels as you like i love that because it means that uh, things i've noticed that it means that things don't stop now when a wheel gets blown off which is very nice, because that was a particular bugbear of mine for anything to do with Landcraft. As soon as they lose a wheel, they halt in place immediately, and then as they recalculate uh, what wheels to use. So that's solved now. And better wheel physics. And when I say better wheel physics, uh, I don't think they've quite gotten that yet, because... Uh, uh, yeah, it's a bug. They're still working on it as of the time of recording. Hello there, hello there, ramp. Not ramp, raft. Sorry. So, things are a little bit bouncy at the moment, if uh, I'm correct. So, here's a tank I built ages ago. Yeah, so this is. They're still working on this. The wheels have new physics that should be more forgiving. But, it, yeah, they do bounce a lot. 
and I need to redesign this tank apparently because uh, its armor is apparently still too close to the ground and I'm not a fan of that. Not a fan at all. It's going bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Does look really good with the shadows though. Really good. So while we look at this dancing, bouncing tank, let's carry on. So there's also a whole mess of bug fixes just to do with, uh, I think, what's it? It's just, there's a few and it's just fixing a bunch of things that people had trouble with. Things like uh, APS guns shooting themselves when traveling at high speed, some spin blocks and all that kind of stuff. And there's no more boom block and there's no more race manager. So if I go here, uh, there's no race manager thing. Race as in uh, uh, two vehicles racing each other, not race as in like, you know, I don't know. Not race as in like uh, which faction is what color or something like that. I don't know. I don't know, there was a joke in there somewhere, but I'm not gonna go for it. And no boom block. I can't even remember if I've ever used the boom block either. So, that's basically all the patch notes. I am... I'm pretty happy about, like, pretty much everything that's going on. Simply because, like, well, it's a lot of stuff that... I don't know, that's not been promised. Like, the graphics came out of nowhere. I had no idea that was happening. Didn't even know I wanted that until it's happened. Like, when they optimize it a little bit more, because I feel they are going to do that, it should be a really good time, because we'll have shadows for our dancing tanks. And once they tweak a few things, once they tweak uh, how the water looks, make it slightly less opaque, and also tweak how wheels function, prevent uh, excessive dancing tanks, and what else, what else? Uh, and just tweak buoyancy, because it's a little bit broke at the moment. So yeah, it's a... Uh, Things are looking good for From the Depths, and despite what some people have been saying, the development team is not dead, okay? Long live the FTD development team. Okay, so that, I think that's about it, really. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you next time in From the Depths. This tank is certainly happy about it. Looking forward to the update being put into the main game. Cannot wait. Farewell!